congratulations to Max Verstappen and the Red Bull Honda team. Superb win at Imola in the wet and the dry. Started on intermediates, nearly went off at the restart. We'll get on to the restart reason in a little bit. Max leading the field on medium slicks, not quite up to temperature. Second last corner, gave it a bit too much rear and almost spun, but managed to stay in front. Charles Leclerc did a very nice job of not taking the lead from him and falling back a little bit. And so Max went on to win at Imola. Superb drive. And I think we saw a lot of what we were talking about yesterday in Max's driving, this thing of not braking too late. That does allow him to have a little bit of margin in conditions that are a bit iffy. And that lovely ability has mid corner to just let the car float and do what it wants to do, just balancing it all with his amazing touch and feel. And that's what we saw throughout the race with Max. Whenever he was under slight pressure, he was able to pull out a lead. He managed the tyres perfectly. He was a bit concerned about when to come in as the track dried in the first phase of the race, seeing what other drivers were going to do, when they were going to go to slicks. Uh, but they came in at just the right moment and Max kept his lead until a red flag came out. And that, of course, was a different race after that on the medium slick tyre on a dry track over the last 25, 30 laps of the race. And he made a great start on that wet track as well. Spray everywhere. Lewis Hamilton, of course, on the pole. Sergio Perez on the right. Max on the left, all on intermediate tyres. But it was Max that made the perfect start. Again, Honda have done a great job in getting that car off the line as efficiently as they are in 2021. And Max had the run on Lewis, got down the inside. Lewis was here. They went into the left-hander. OK. But of course, at that moment, it was pretty clear that Max was going to come across to his apex on the right-hand exit of the chicane. Lewis didn't drop back, he stayed there, and there was a bit of a touch. Lewis lost uh, left front wing end plate as a result, and then drove very well in that first phase of the race with that damage, it has to be said. But it was Max who then took the lead, and that was it, really. From his point of view, it was just a question of managing all the variables that went on, and he did that perfectly. It was one of those Red Bull Max Verstappen days when it was just 100% right. So congratulations to them. He was really quick at the end of the race. He didn't set fastest lap. That actually went to Lewis. But then let's get on to Lewis Hamilton. So he was P2 out of the first corner. And although he put pressure on Max from time to time, it always looked as if it was going to be Max Verstappen who had the gap. Max came in one lap before Lewis to change to slicks. Lewis had that one lap to try and get a little bit of margin, but he didn't. It was a slightly longer stop for Lewis as they did some repair work to the car as well. So as they went into the second phase of the race on slicks, Max still had five seconds over Lewis. And it looked to be a good race. Lewis had pace by now, but then suddenly it all went wrong. Max had already got through some of the traffic. Lewis is in the traffic going well. His tires are almost up to temperature. There was a dry line. It was wet offline. He got inside George Russell going into Toza, but then got onto the wet. The back end broke away. Lewis went onto the gravel. That was the mistake, obviously, that he let the back end get onto the wet bit of the track. He should have been a little bit more patient at that point. But then as he nudged, as he went towards the, the tire wall, he tried to give it a bit of throttle to see if he can get the back end round to stop it hitting the tire wall. And all it did was dig the front into the tire wall. And he just sat there. You could hear the engine running. He was trying to do something. And he thought, well, that's it. Lewis Hamilton's race is over. But he did manage to find reverse and to back the car away from the wall onto the tarmac. We don't often see reverse being employed that efficiently in Formula One. It was quite interesting to see it. But Lewis got back onto the track. But you were still thinking, ah, is he going to be in the points at the end of all this, even if he does have no real damage to the car? But then, well, I don't know, let's throw it over to the conspiracy theorists. Then Valtteri Bottas had been nowhere all day, really struggling in the wet. So we need to be thinking about Valtteri and his role in this team right now. But having said that, if you're going to have a role, get Lewis back into the race. So there's Valtteri with George Russell in the Williams. He'd been going really well, looking for a points finish in the Williams. George had a run on Valtteri with DRS. And it looks as if Valtteri moved over perhaps center right of the, of the road. Not massively so as they went through the kink. George was about here at this point and looks like he just got a right rear on the white line. The car dug down and then just spun. They took, we're in eighth gear now, absolutely flat out, 300 kilometers an hour, spun the Williams and hit the T-bone, basically the Mercedes at that point. I don't think you can really blame Valtteri for what he did. You see many drivers using a little bit of road coming through that kink there. It wasn't as if he did one of these. Uh, and I think George should have given a little bit more room to Valtteri, or certainly made more allowance for Valtteri at that point. But he will argue, oh, well, you know, if I'd stayed there, Valtteri would have hit me. So 
you know, it was one of those things, I guess, you know, but talking very, very high speed. And when it is high speed like that, um, you know, I think the onus is on the driver who's doing the overtaking to make sure that he's got enough room to do so. Anyway, it was a massive shunt, red flag came out, uh, both Mercedes drivers causing that, of course, which gave Lewis the chance to come back into the pit lane. He was eighth at this point, and then everybody restarted on new or near new sets of, of slicks. In the case of Lando Norris and Sergio Perez on the soft tire and the medium tire for everyone else. So that was basically a second life for Lewis Hamilton, approximately 30 laps to go about half distance. And on slicks, he passed Lance Stroll, the two Ferraris of Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc, and then towards the end, Lando Norris, who'd been brilliant in the McLaren Mercedes to take P2. I guess he would argue, and I think you could argue from a Mercedes Lewis perspective, that had he not made that mistake, had none of that happened, he probably would have been second anyway. So no real damage done for Lewis Hamilton. You could say it was a good day for him in that respect. So Max Verstappen, great win. Lewis Hamilton, P2. And that meant P3, a brilliant P3 for Lando Norris. It had been a difficult early phase for the race. He'd been hit by Lance Stroll in the opening laps, damaged a barge board on the McLaren, but despite that, he quickly made up ground, quickly caught and passed his teammate, Daniel Ricciardo, to the point where McLaren had to get on the radio and say to Daniel, Daniel, seed position, we want to know what sort of times Lando can do in free air. That's not a great radio message to hear if you're Daniel Ricciardo, Grand Prix winner in McLaren, but nonetheless, it had to be made. And he pulled away from Daniel Lando, that is, at about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 seconds a lap. It was a really, really impressive performance from Lando in that early phase. So he's quick in the wet, he's quick in the dry, he's just driving beautifully at the moment. And with Carlos Sainz making a whole bunch of mistakes in the wet in his Ferrari. And here you gotta say that in one's mind, you always think of Carlos as being a great wet weather driver, but we have saw him make mistakes early in his career in the wet, and this was an abysmal performance from him in those conditions. He got a lot better as the track found grip later in the afternoon, but early on, he was just all over the place. Anyway, Lando quickly obviously made up position, got past the whole science group, and by the time everything stopped, and they were ready for that restart after the Bottas Russell shunt, Lando was in a very, very strong third place. And at the restart, interestingly, as I say, McLaren put Lando on the soft tire rather than the medium. And it wasn't long before Mercedes, for example, were getting on the radio to Lewis, who was on the medium, saying Lando Norris is on the soft, they're probably gonna go away, which means that whole group in front of you, Lewis, will, will come to you. Of course, I don't think many people have been watching what Lando had done on that string of laps on the soft tire on the Friday. We spoke about it in the video post Friday about how many laps he'd done on that soft tire. And that explains, I guess, to some extent why he didn't go for the medium tire in Q2 yesterday. His McLaren just felt so good on the soft and he knew he could get a lot of laps out of that. So it was a good choice by Lando. He did start to get a vibration but then it went away. And then towards the end of the race, he was complaining about clutch slip mid corner. Uh, and the radio quickly came back saying, no, 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 you're hitting the clutch paddle. Uh, so make sure you don't do that. Now, I don't know what you thought, but I thought, well, okay, he's probably doing something with his hand in the middle of the steering, in the middle of the corner on the steering wheel. But he said later that it was actually his knee, which gives you an idea of the driving position that he's got. I find it incredible that the knee would have been hitting the, um, the clutch pedal, but anyway, that's what he said. So there was Lando doing a brilliant job. The tires, I think, may have lost their edge slightly in the last few laps. He didn't complain about it at all. It was just Lewis, he had an all-round quicker car and DRS to help. It enabled him to pass Lando to take P2 with what, four laps to go. So a great drive by Lando Norris, partly because of his defense when Lewis was pushing him hard. It took Lewis about five good laps to get past him. It took, it took Lewis about four laps to get past Charles Leclerc, it has to be said, whereas Carlos Sainz, he brushed aside in about one lap. Anyway, getting back to the point, Lander, did, he was very good in defense. And of course, he just obliterated his teammate all day and made that McLaren Mercedes look the car that it is, which is a really, really quick podium winning car. So congrats to him. Uh, he was actually voted driver of the day and I think that was pretty appropriate, although difficult to say that Max wasn't driver of the day. I mean, what more could he have done? Or indeed Lewis after his mistake, what a comeback from him as well. So three great drivers on the podium and three deserved results, I think there. 
Just going down the finishing order um, to keep this relatively short and sharp. Carlos Sainz, as I say, rel relatively disappointing day. On slicks in the last phase of the race, he was about there or thereabouts with Charles Leclerc, although Charles got more out of the tyres and was starting to pull away again from Carlos. Um, and so they finished fourth and fifth for Ferrari. But they won't be disappointed by that after everything that's happened in the last 18 months. Ferrari definitely looking stronger and stronger, you could say, with every race at the moment. So good result for them. Daniel Ricciardo, very disappointing sixth place. If Lando's P3 in that car, what was Daniel doing down in P6? Lance Stroll finished seventh in the Aston Martin, but both he and Sebastian Vettel had gear shift problems, and Sebastian, in addition to that, fly-by-wire brake problems. So there's something dramatic going on there with the electronics. We need to get Scarbs to look into that next week, I think. But a good drive by Lance Stroll, given all of that. And he was not bad in defence when Lewis was behind him as well, about three or four laps that Lewis took to get past him. Um, Pierre Gasly, a bit of a messy eighth place. As I said yesterday, a lot of mistakes from him and also from Yuki Sonoda who was not very who went off in the wet early on and then went off in the dry early on um, I think that's a much better car than the p8 by Pierre indicates and I think the team will want to get this race very quickly behind them now they're only 12 kilometers from the circuit um, so the, I guess the memory will stay with them for a while but yeah they need to move on after a pretty scrappy weekend they will say we were in the points but you know there you go but they beat Alfa Romeo's Kimi Raikkonen, who finished ninth, good to see Kimi in the points, went round and round all day and did a pretty good job all round, didn't have too many dramas. And Alfa Romeo, as I say, looking a little bit better than they did last year. Certainly it's a better car than last year. And the final point went to Esteban Ocon in the Alpine, who beat and was ahead of his teammate Fernando Alonso all day. So we said yesterday, bad day for Fernando. Let's hope he has a really good race on Sunday. You thought when it rained and you saw all sorts of things going on that it would be conditions that would really suit Fernando, particularly when he went off on the formation lap or coming onto the grid, actually, um, and the bits all over the car. And I thought to myself, oh, well, that's, that's going to bring the best out in Fernando because he loves it when the car's falling apart and he's got to be a, a hero. But it didn't happen. And he finished a desultory 11th in the other Alpine. So disappointing for Fernando and for all the Fernando fans out there, I think. Uh, and Sergio Perez was quick at moments of the race, but he went off when they were behind the safety car at turn nine and then repassed behind the safety car, which gave him a 10 second penalty. And then after that, he had various offs as well. So although he did show a lot of pace at various stages of the race, um, only P12 for Sergio Perez. So it's been a great start to the 21 season. Incredibly competitive racing between Mercedes and Red Bull Honda. Congratulations to both Lewis and Max for their wins in those two races. And today, in addition, it was announced that Formula One will be racing in Miami, Florida, in the second quarter of 2022 in the Miami Gardens area near the Hard Rock Stadium and a race circuit that's going to be built near there. Uh, can't wait for that. I don't, I don't know, but I'm sure that if they build a good track, um... Yeah, we can uh, have a lot of fun out there.